Welcome to Lexicology, the study of words. In this unit, we're going to look at a system that's used by linguists to write the sounds of speech. As English speakers, we take our spelling for granted. However, as you'll see, English spelling is actually pretty odd. Because of this, back in the 19th century, language teachers got together and invented a system that could be used to describe the speech sounds of any language. We call this system the International Phonetic Alphabet, or IPA. So, here we have a fish. We all know how to spell the word fish in English, right? Yeah. G-H-O-T-I. Okay, it looks a little odd, doesn't it? But on second thought, it makes perfect sense, right? The G-H is pronounced just like it is in the word rough. The O is pronounced as it is in the word women. And the T-I is pronounced just as it is in the word nation. This example shows the inconsistencies that we find in English spelling. And there are many more. We have different symbols for a single sound. Two, 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 through, through, clue, shoe, suit, coup. All different symbols, same sound. See, see, seen, receive, thief, amoeba, machine, Aesop. We also have the same symbol for different sounds. So we have the symbol, the letter A, but it has different sounds. Dame, dad, father, call, sofa, many. They're all the same letter, but they're all different sounds. It's easy to understand why someone learning English as a second language would have trouble with spelling. I remember one of my students asking me why the word character begins with the same two letters as the word charter, but they are pronounced completely differently. I'm afraid I didn't have a very satisfying answer. It involves the history of the English language and the different pathways that led to these two different words. So we end up with this CH with two different sounds, charter, character. Same with this OU, out through, tough, different pronunciations. Sign, resign, pleasure, same letter, different sounds. Pleasure, read, <laughs> doesn't seem like it ends. Thin, then, but it doesn't stop there. There's more. We have two symbols for one sound, CH, like in character, GH, tough, TH, and though, EA, deal, PH, in, in physics. We have one symbol for two sounds, so that the, the letter X actually has a K and an S in it, if you really listen closely. X, sit, right? X, okay? The weirdest thing of all is that there are some cases where we have a symbol for no sound. So in the word though, we don't pronounce the G-H. Often, many people don't pronounce the T. Bomb, we never say bomba. Make, the E is silent. Pneumonia, we don't pronounce the P. It's clear that if we want a system that's consistent and easy to use, English spelling is just not going to cut it. If we're serious about capturing the sounds of language, and we are, we need a more appropriate alphabet. This alphabet should be a complete list of language sounds analogous to the periodic table of the elements. The list of sounds should be accurate enough to allow a reader to produce native sounding speech in any human language. 
The guiding principle is simple. Each sound has a single unique symbol. One sound, one symbol. What would be great about this alphabet is that it would allow us to transcribe any language phonetically. That means it would be an international alphabet that could be used by speakers of any language. What we need is phonetic transcription. Such an alphabet has been produced. In 1886, the International Phonetic Association met to devise an alphabet based on this principle, one sound, one symbol. Although there are some diacritic symbols, these are small marks that indicate minor modifications, the inventors of this alphabet succeeded in providing linguists an excellent method for transcribing speech. This alphabet is a living document. As new sounds are discovered, they are added to the list. It doesn't happen often, but there have been some relatively recent revisions. Now we're able to write using an alphabet of all languages. What always amazes me is that this alphabet will fit on a single page. This slide shows all the sounds of human language. The table on the top is all of the consonants, and the trapezoid at the lower left is all of the vowels. The details of pronunciation can also be captured using many of the diacritic symbols on the page. Since we are mainly studying English, we'll only use a fraction of all the symbols. What's important to remember is that this complete list exists and could help you as you learn a new language or understand how in the world speech sounds are produced.